Good morning, everyone. Uh, this Parsha, the Torah portion this morning is Ki Tetze, and um, I will talk about what those words mean. Uh, I'll begin by talking about what those words mean, actually. Uh, they, in Hebrew, translated into English, uh, means when you go out. And uh, the theme of my talk is uh, what happens when you go out? When do you go out? What do you go out of? What do you go out from? What do you go out to? And what does that have to do with the situation in our world, um, which is dire in this very moment on, in so, on so many levels? So how does this Torah give us some instruction, some guidance, some clarity um, for what we can do when we go out? And specifically the first line, and this is continuing uh, Moses uh, recounting what he has uh, learned or received in his uh, decades of leading this people out from enslavement into the wilderness. Uh, it seems like maybe they are getting closer to some place. And yet here's this book where there's no movement, like they're just frozen, listening. They're just listening, listening, getting this massive download. And uh, I can relate to that right there. Like how many of us are feeling completely frozen and helpless right now because we're just getting this continual download of uh, the state of, of the world of humanity and we're frozen and we don't know how to move forward. Uh, and, and yet uh, we want to, right? We, we want to. Um, we want to find something else uh, that will call us out or that we will discover when we go out of ourselves, of our helplessness and our hopelessness. Um, we want movement. And uh, so the first line now that Moses is, is saying, and he's talking about uh, when we are in, this next uh, stage of, of human evolutionary development. So there's some hope happening here. And still in that next stage, which could be the next thought or the next breath in the next moment, or it could be after the election or after the war, or you know, it's after whatever you're after is. Um, this is even then, when you go out to do battle with your enemies, that's the first line. When you go out to do battle on your enemies, really, is, is how I understand the, the Hebrew grammar. And, the, and it goes on, the first verse, the opening verse, Kitetse goes on to say, and you find something of deep, deep value. You find something beautiful and precious, a precious jewel. So when you go out and you think you're going out to encounter what you have thought of, what you have been taught is your enemy, you find beauty. Wow. This is something to really hold on to. Torah is saying there is beauty. Wherever you think there is no beauty, there is beauty. And when you go out and you find that precious jewel in what you thought of as your enemy, this is what can happen. And what is that precious jewel, that beauty that we can find in our enemy? It's their humanity. So I'm thinking of this whole Parsha as, as this beautiful uh, Torah Dharma teaching, when you can go out of yourself, out of your pain, out of um, all the, the narratives and the news and the fear that, that there's nothing but, but evil and badness in what you think of of your enemy, when you can go out of that, just as, as Abraham was told, go out, leave that. Then you go, you find yourself, you find your humanity, 
And you can now, Torah is saying, you can find their humanity and their humanity is beautiful. It's a precious jewel. And in that moment, you're having this experience of discovering beauty in what you thought of as your enemy. And in that moment, everything is transformed and the war stops. The war stops because you want to cleave onto that, that, that experience of finding the beauty and the humanity in your enemy, which you have to go through such fear to get to. But the moment when you get there is so precious, it's so transformative that, that you want to become one with it. And I think this is Torah teaching us how to become peacemakers, that we have to go out of ourselves and encounter and find and look for the beauty in what we think of as our enemy. And this is many of us know, uh, I do consider myself a Jubu, a Jewish person practicing Buddhism. Uh, one of the core teachings is how do you um, uh, become uh, free of enemies? It's by befriending your enemy. And how do you befriend your enemy? It's by finding the beauty in your enemy. And that's exactly what this Torah portion is telling us how to turn our enemies into our friends. It's, it's by seeing their beauty and their humanity. It's by recognizing that there is beauty, incredible beauty in what our mind had previously thought is only evil, only enemy. So this is the power of our minds, our doors of perception to open and see differently. And of course, um, and, and we have this yearning for that, which is, you know, one of the main themes underlying Torah is that even though this, this people, all these humans who are, uh, you know, just seem lost in their own uh, self-preservation, you know, whether it's brothers killing brothers and people tricking each other or peoples killing each other, uh, that underlying it is always this yearning for this greater presence, for this intimacy with the divine, right? To for Torah, the, the strongest way that the tradition can uh, get us to wake up to this yearning we have to come out of ourselves and connect with the beauty of something greater is Torah does this by talking about the divine, um, you know, God is how we translate it. Um, so in this Torah portion, the, the particular metaphors that are used uh, is the masculine yearning for unity with the feminine. And um, it, to really be able, I, for me, to uh, turn to this as wisdom, um, I have to go through a bit of, okay, um, I really don't like using a lot of these uh, metaphors of, you know, the, the male figure taking the female figure captive. Um, I, I think we're, we, we wouldn't use these metaphors in the world today, hopefully. Uh, and what uh, I recognize and what uh, really is helpful is studying Jewish mystical texts, uh, particularly the Zohar, that's talking about this, this primal yearning we have to be able to come out of ourselves, to find ourselves, to merge with something greater is the yearning and the achievement of the unification of the male and the female, that that is what brings the oneness, uh, which by the way, brings us back right to the origin story of the creation of earthling, you know, back in the first book of the Torah. Um, so we're also, you know, Torah's circling back. Remember all that because we're coming to the end of the book now. So that's uh, just a, maybe a helpful way to look at the metaphor. If you open, actually, if you're opening the book and looking at it and going, oh, what is this, uh, you know, misogynist SHIT? It's really um, saying use powerful metaphors because this is life and death to find out how you could go out of yourself toward your enemy and find something beautiful. Um, Torah uses the strongest metaphors 
that it can, you know, like violence. <laughs> um, so that's just a little aside of how I can encounter this book and find this really beautiful, inspiring wisdom for myself. So this, this intimacy that um, we can achieve when we come out of the idea of enemy, that, that there's a separation between good and evil, uh, for me, coming out of that idea um, is essential to make peace in our world and also is, is a natural movement of uh, what, what I think of as this uh, radical connection uh, that seems that, that we're yearning for all the time. We're yearning for something all the time, right? Even people who have all the wealth in the world, there's this underlying human yearning all the time. That's why we see people with power and wealth who are, you know, super unhappy. And you could see people with not a lot who, who seem happy. So the happiness is, there's a deeper yearning than this material satisfaction. And this is what Torah is talking about. It's this yearning for this radical intimacy, for the unification of humans, of ma masculine and feminine, and of us with this greater energy, which Torah talks about as divine energy. And it's it's based on a, com a, a complete surrender to, to separateness, to the idea of separateness, to the idea that the problem in the world is out there, that there's a separation between inner and outer. So this week's Torah portion is about going out. Next week, it's going to be right back about going in. So what Torah is saying is overcome the notion that anything is separate, that, that uh, I can't find beauty there and I can only find beauty here. You know, my story is the only story worth uh, cheering for in the world or worth making room for leave behind those ideas, uh, lay down defenses, the very defenses that create the idea of enemy. And what happens in the, in the Torah portion in the beginning is that when we do that, as, as I said before, what happens is we see this beauty and we want to cleave to it. Um, I thought that was a useful word. It's like the, the traditional way of describing what happens when the warrior and and again the the story the archetypal story that Tori uses is the male warrior wants to take the woman captive well the male warrior sees something that that is needed to uh for him to feel a sense of uh complete immersion in in beauty and, and he wants to cleave to it. He wants to become one with it. Uh, I thought maybe cleave is like a, I don't know, a word that we could kind of buy into uh, rather than dominate, because I don't think it's about dominating. Uh, in fact, the first thing that happens is this, uh, the other half gets space to, to enhance her beauty for herself, I like to think. Uh, so it's not about conquering and dominating. Uh, it's, it's just the opposite. It's about getting closer to uh, oneness, to what Torah really sees as beauty, which is the tov, the goodness in all of creation. So Torah is giving us this vision that if we transform the way we see and understand others, particularly others who we think of as enemy, we will fulfill our deepest longings. We will come out stronger because we will be uh, unified. We will have access to all of our powers. We will recognize that the way to this promised land, because the people are perched, they're still like, aren't we there yet? And Moses is going to some other promised land, not the one they're going to. So there's still chaos and confusion happening here um, that we will recognize that the way to the promised land is by seeing what Jewish mysticism actually calls the Shekhinah, 
that that the what we're going to find when we can see the beauty in our enemy is is the shekhinah the the actual imminence of godliness the part of godliness that uh the whole torah story has been about us figuring out how do we make what do we mere mortals do so that this uh, divine presence, which I like to think of as a feminine presence, um, and many strands of Judaism do, not all, um, so that this Shekhinah, this this uh, divine feminine uh, is revealed as living among us because the the truth of, of Torah, at least through the Jewish mysticism, is that the Shekhinah is with us and it's upon us to reveal her. So going to your enemy and seeing their beauty, that is revealing the Shekhinah, <laughs> right? You know, there's... Um, so how does this work for us right now? And what does it mean? What is it saying that this warrior is the one who's who's doing this in this Parsha? It's again, this leaving of fixed identity that started with the journey of Abraham, the first Ivri, the first Hebrew, the first boundary crosser, the patriarch of all of the, you know, Jew, Judaism, Islam and Christianity, leave your fixed identity. Um, in this case, it's the fixed identity of the warrior, right? Um, and when we can leave our fixed identity, that's when our vision opens up and we can see more clearly. When we are stuck in fixed identities of separation, uh, we, we can see more clearly. And of course, this is so scary. Yesterday, I, I was, as uh, every Sunday, I go downtown in New York City to Union Square to the... Um, the the rally the the vigil of Israelis for ceasefire, and um, you know how how scary it is for Israelis to say we don't care what's happening with Hamas. Stop the war. That's leaving your fixed identity. How scary is that? And the next step is then. We hear letters from this young, every week they read a letter from this young woman from Gaza, and we hear, hear reports from peacemakers from the West Bank. Ah, those are our, those are, <laughs> our sisters and brothers are on all sides of borders. That's what we have to see. We have to see beyond the fixed identity that says enemy there, friend here, because we know it's all mixed up now. And we do have to see the beauty in the people we think we think are mixed up. I'm sure they think I'm very mixed up. We have to see each other's beauty. Um, I think Torah is, is also here helping us. Uh, how do we understand this concept of, of chosenness, which is spoken of in Torah? And I think uh, Torah is warning us over and over and over. Chosenness does not mean that you've got it right. Mm -mm. No, 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 no. Um, the chosenness is saying that your own story um, is part of the flow. You're chosen to be part of the flow. That's the Shekhinah, this emanation of the great divine plan that, that, we are all chosen to be part of this ever-changing flow. It doesn't mean we're chosen to be separate from the flow, just the opposite. That we are to, um, when we are find ourselves with power, because this warrior, uh, unnamed warrior, right, at the beginning of this Parsha, finds uh, himself, uh, to use the metaphor of the Torah portion, with incredible power, right? Um, so, so he's he's chosen to receive what you know this uh, beauty as uh, what's translated as captive, right? He's got a lot of power to choose uh, power over all of his energies, 
right? When he's gone out. So he's chosen, but he's not chosen to separate himself from the flow of life. He's, he's chosen to enter into it so that we see that the beauty, the, 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 the maiden, again, to use this archetypal metaphor, uh, is the Shekhinah. He's chosen to uh, reveal more deeply the, the way that the divine is among us if we can step out of ourselves and see the beauty everywhere, that that's what the chosenness is. Um, So the Torah portion, as I said, kitetse means when you exit, when you go out. And it, it, this Torah portion is, uh, I believe, always read in this Hebrew month of Elul. And uh, Elul is the month when we do this deep inner accounting um, leading up to Rosh Hashanah, the, the, the birth of the world right? The, the celebration, the anniversary of the birth of the world. So why is all of this happening? Uh, what, what does this Parsha have to do with Elul? It's said that this is the month when we can deeply encounter this Shekhinah. She's waiting for us. She's in the field. Uh, and some of the translations are when you go out into the field. And I, it, it, that's not actually literally in the Hebrew and I think maybe that translation is being used because when we talk about Elul, we say we have some a new opportunity for access. So maybe we are like these spiritual warriors going out into this battlefield of life uh, to encounter the Shekhinah. Maybe that's why uh, the JPS translates it uh, as in the field. It's interesting to look at the different translations if you want to be a little nerdy about this. Um, but, uh, think of this, if you want to take this on for yourself as some kind of work is, okay, when I go out, when I see enemy, um, what is the field that I could go out into, right? Where I can find oneness, where I can find beauty everywhere. So that when I do that, I am doing the work for the world and for myself as of, of revealing the, the Shekhinah, bringing her out of hiding so that we can all live in the divine flow for an, another year. And um, I thought I would end with this beautiful prayer uh, by from Rabbi Miles Krasin. Um, and I actually read this prayer a year ago during Kitetsi for Shtickle. <laughs> I just noticed that when I, this morning. Um, and it is a prayer and practice for reuniting with Shekhinah in Elul. When you break out of the conventional way of relating to your challenges as a warrior, you being who gods you, places herself in your hands and you can redeem the spark of Shekhinah that was held captive within your unique challenge, you will then be able to recognize the beauty of the Shekhinah even within her captivity and your passion will be aroused to liberate her and merge with her. Invite her into the depths of your soul where she can reveal her true nature and rid herself of the fangs of judgment. Once she has removed the disguise of her captivity, let her dwell deep within you, arousing tears of teshuva for the entire month of Elul. And then in the month of Tishrei, which is the new year, you may fully merge with her in the way that consecrated lovers know they are one. May we all be blessed to recognize our unique challenges as opportunities to liberate sparks of Shekhinah. May rescuing captive sparks become our passion.
May their liberation melt our hearts with holy tears of teshuva for the whole month of Elul, that we may unite with our beloved on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. Amen.